Hello, everyone, and welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. I'm the co-host of this program, DeSoto Brown, the Vision Museum historian. And joining us by audio only from Germany is our host, Martin Despang. Hello, Martin. Are you there? I'm there. There we you are. Know, bright and early, but that's usually the case because I'm half around the world yes, and 11 hours apart. Yes, you are. <laughs> Let's go to the first slide real quick here which uh, reminds us of how we ended last time, where at the top left, you were so excited about the Pokey store right. in Munich here That's in right. Germany. And then you let me go skiing with my son, who you see at the very bottom left with my daughter-in-law. And you were most excited about another um, food item, <laughs> which is uh, the brand that show, that's shown on the Sun Deck lounge chairs, and that's Almdudla. And I'm not asking you to repeat that. No, I'm not going to do a good job this of repeating a, that. And that's an Austrian herb lemonade that I grew up on because I'm half Austrian because my mother is uh, Austrian. Hi, mom. So, um, but obviously these these guys are not wearing a po appropriate attire for the cold. Usually they wear their traditional, you know, multi-layered. Uh, wool stuff, and and here they're just almost naked. You know, they like have the lederhosen on and no shirt and bikini. So I think they want to be in the tropics, right? Of course they do. Yes, and so, so my son and my daughter-in-law want want to be in the warmth, and they go to their their next step island, which is the island of Malta, to export their aloha shaved ice business there. So good luck, guys. On that one so everyone wants to be back in paradise so we go back so let's go to the second page here please where we see this is our Champs-Élysées this is uh, Kalakaua Avenue that and, and whole Waikiki used to be palm groves and which you see at the very top left on that historic book here cover where they were cutting through the uh, almost like talking you know Paris houseman was cutting through the boulevards so they cut Kalakaua through the palm groves and then through mid-century, the architects were really keen to keep that sort of character. And unfortunately, today, most of that is gone. Fairly recently, at the top right, we referenced a show we did about that we lost international marketplace. It was replaced with something pretty corporate, American, uh, not what it, what it used to be. So here we're looking at what we were thinking might be the last piece of tropical, exotic, grittiness, sort of mysterious. You see this little merchandise hut, you see a tree, you see this sort of signage that's a carved wooden thing, and it, it points out a place that we want to go to. And if we go over to the next slide, uh, this is us turning around and going into it. And at the bottom, we're quoting activist journalist Kurt Sandburn, who was saying, this might be the last bit of gracious green ground levels in, in Waikiki. And if we go to the next picture, we see what we have to expect there, which is some nice refreshments here. This is a, a bar, obviously, or a restaurant, and it uses sort of typeface that reminds me of your uh, of your Tikio oh, yeah. Aces uh, keynote speech that we're talking about. This is probably not original, but it's themed after that. Correct. But it makes us curious, where are we going to splash? Right. So we go to the next slide, and we see something very iconic for mid-century, which is an oval pool, a big oval pool. If we move on to the next slide, that's in fact what actually dominates the space. It's, it's the absence of architecture, but it's the presence of nature. Here a little bit nature under dictatorship because that's what a, a pool is. But it's this natural element. But it's it's fronted and framed by, in the background you see architecture, and the next page is, is something we're zooming on. And it's something that's a little odd to put next to people you know, in their vacation. It's actually where you leave your car. And it's a parking garage. And we were pointing out that we referenced at the very bottom right, we did a show that's rather provocative because it's picking up on my folks here saying, hey, you're such a small island. Where in the world are you driving? So we're polemically proposing bump up public transportation, walk a lot more, and you free up a lot of space for basically hosting the houseless homeless, and they can all move into the easy breezy and shaded parking garages. But that aside, look at the look at the detailing here. Even though it's modern technology, is cast in place, but there's some delicacy, delicacy. There's some love. There's some dedication. They cast in these sort of patterns that are not nostalgic. They're not you know chevron or palm leaves. What they do these days, they're abstract. 
their soft edge geometry very nicely done, very delicately. And if you move on to the next picture, only if you then look up, if, you're, if your eyes get drawn up, you see an artificial mountain, a chunk of architecture buildings. At top left, we reference, you see something we, we did a show about, which we call the, ar the architecture, which is all these tons of pedals, which you taught me the term. Yes. They're licked and stick to the buildings and <laughs> allow you to enjoy the outdoors all the right. night. Right. Uh, next picture here shows us that the complex has another wing, and this is fronting the street that's named after the person, the princess, who, uh, yeah, gave the name to the hotel. Correct. Princess Carl Let's Yulang. move on. Exactly. Move on to the next picture. There's what's really typical. We were talking before the show that's a very sort of uh, efficient and effective construction in, in concrete that's very sort of international style. But they gave it some, some softening touch, which are these meandering, and I'm avoiding yet to say wavy, but that's what people would see these days, uh, lanai, the lanai form. So they went through the effort not to make them rectilinear as everything else, but to give them that sort of sexy curviness. Correct. And we go to the next slide, that sexy curviness, uh, our tropical tourism expert Suzanne was experiencing some years ago in another project that Im 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 implies... Um, and applies that as well, that scene that is the Kalhala Hilton Hotel where the, uh, the guardrails are also bowed out. And we were saying, you know, this isn't just, uh, these days everything we've seen is still be stuck in postmodernism. This isn't just to look wavy because there's water around. This gives you the very sort of utilitarian functional advantage that at the middle of the lanai you can reach out the most and almost seem you're flying while when you go further to the side ends of your lanai, you're more sheltered from the presence of your neighbor. And once again, look at that division wall. It's got the same sort of intricacy of foam work that we were talking about earlier there. Correct. Right. Uh, talking tropical tourism uh, expert Suzanne, if you go to the next slide, uh, in her show about tropical tourism, she was pointing out that um, all these hotel rooms these days look more or less generic well, you told me, and we still have to provide some images in some of the future shows, that um, through the years from the heydays of this era when these hotels were built up to the 70s, even more, they're rather crazy in their interior decor, right? Absolutely. They were not restrained with plain white covers on the bed, but in fact, lots of pinks and purples and greens and oranges got inserted into these, into these hotel rooms in the 1970s in particular, because they were really showing off that you were in a tropical place. You weren't at home, but it was supposed to be exotic and tropical. And today, we have shifted away to this very bland color palette, as we see in the pictures here, which are from some of the rooms in the Princess Kaiulani Hotel. Uh-huh. Okay, we please move on to the next slide, but not without asking the audience, everyone, to be seated, because there's going to be some shocking news here that yeah. we have to share, unfortunately. And this one is taking it slow because this was shocking about almost a decade ago. I think this article uh, was from 2010 where there was uh, the owners of these hotels here, which is pretty much um, a bunch of people like Kyuya and Starwood and people like that who own these properties. They wanted to redevelop. And they wanted to redevelop the mid-century wing of the Moana Surf Rider. And um, our activist journalist, Kurt Sandburn, uh, was lobbying against that and preventing it. Thank you, Kurt, because yes. this is a very sweet, delicate piece that is very much alike uh, the, 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 the different parts of the building of the property that sort of Mauka, which is the Princess Kaolani site. And here as well, they wanted to basically tear down the lower story parts keep the tower and basically build another tower. Right. And while we were talking maybe urbanistically, we were saying these towers are basically in direction Malka Makai, so they allow to keep the airflow on a macro scale. But if we look at the very at the renderings at the bottom right, you know, architecturally we weren't so sure if they would be of benefit and an improvement for the for the uh, for the fabric. Of Waikiki. And, and now and people are self seated. We go to the next page because this popped up and you had to shock me yeah. half around the world and say, Martin, look at this. So right. here they are again right. trying to do the same thing, but even more extreme because they basically want to raise 
as the article even is bluntly honest to say that, the entire side, the entire property, and replace it with this. Right. And let's look into this closer, the next slide. We're looking at the bottom part, and we can only imagine this is going to be tons of parking, this is going to be tons of retail that you lick and stick and ribbon decorate with some crazy stuff that we talked about. These are the references at the top of the page. Right. That these days, the most of the dedication of architectural passion goes into decorating parking garages, which That's is right. typologically a little I ironically and also architecturally a little ironically. We see that tons of in Kaka'ako, which is the one on the left, and we see it also in Waikiki on another hospitality type project, right. which is the right. Ritz Carlton that uh, that Kurt was very critical about. And let's move to the next slide here because we're now we're looking at the upper part of the development, which is another tower. Right. And we are, and it's very, it reminds us of what we show at the top of the page of the Ritz Carlton. And then the, the lanai's or the balcony seems sort of staggered and, 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 and sawtooth, you know, yes. lined up. And that reminds us we almost don't want to. Um, say the name of the owner no. of the hotel at the Trump Tower. Yes. So, um, you know, we, you would expect to be something of novelty, I mean, on such a property, property and, and you pretty much find find a mix of things that have been done anyway. It's very generic, very corporate. Uh, to me, has nothing to do with um, tropical, exotic, erotic I don't know what you think, what yeah. we can see on this picture here. Yeah, I, I think that... So one, let's go... Yeah, I, I just was going to say, too, that you're absolutely right that um, we see a lot of generic buildings in Waikiki, and the whole point of Waikiki, mm. as you have been pointing out, is the mystique it has as the tropical destination in paradise. So are we really mm. fulfilling architecturally what we could be doing in this iconic location? Yeah, and we also want to, at the bottom, we basically quote from the news that this new development will have a little over a thousand rooms, so a, a thousand and nine rooms. So keep that in mind because Correct. we will revisit that. Yes. Okay, but now I need a little bit of a therapeutic time, so let's go back to the previous days, to the good old days, to the heyday right. of the property. Let's right. go to the next slide and talking um, erotic tropical exotic this is it for me right i mean yeah. this is where i want to be this is what i expect when i want to travel half around the world right and you know i want palm trees i want sort of these hot uh, dicky roof architecture yes. i want a lot of sun i want water i want sky it has it all correct and um the way it provided that is rather interesting because of course it's an urban setting this yeah. comes across as very sort of landscapey and almost suburban or somewhere in nature but if we move on to the next picture, you tell me how this is sort of framed from the outside. Right. And this, is, this was actually a meeting room uh, facility that was uh, built in 1958. But it looks just like or very similar to the buildings fronting the Princess Kaiulani on Kalakaua Avenue, which are retail buildings. And they have a very distinctive, low-key, but very attractive appearance to them with a textured concrete block walls and then this angular sort of thrusting roof that does have some kind of Polynesian uh, influences. So it is modern, mm -hmm. it's mid-century, but it also isn't just generically like everything else. And it does have a very beautiful appeal. This building in, that we're looking at right now is gone. It was uh, replaced in uh, part of the redevelopment of this entire property with a building that mm -hmm. we're going to be seeing very soon. Yeah, and it also reminds me, and I, I forgot to put a reference picture into a previous show about the Makaha Resort, yeah, which was also sitting on this uh, horizontal concrete plinth. Yes, and then you know the, the sort of the like the more pagoda-like Polynesian buildings were sort of sitting on that one. Correct. So let's move on to the next slide here, which is a very cute and 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 nice uh, little uh, uh, illustration. Uh, of the property, so how they imagined it to be, yes. and it shows all these aspects. And we put in a little uh, reference to a previous show with Will Bruder, which uh, where he walked us through what he really liked in this area. And this is the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. And the architects of this project too were Gartner Daily architects, and they were also commissioned to actually redo the interior mid-century um, right. of the Royal Hawaiian Correct. Hotel. Right. Right. So if we move on to the next picture here, we put in the date of the year of build, which is 1955. 
And if you go to, to some nice historic Hawaii um, documentations, I found that the same year um, uh, dates um, the Sinclair Library that we were talking about right. a couple of times. And now that gets redeveloped, that we're by, basically very worried about because they don't seem to keep the integrity of the original building. So one of us, either us or Doko Momo, us, uh, have to probably shed a light on that one yeah. um, as well. So uh, let's move on to the next picture. Uh, I, I put in the, um, the, the Biltmore uh, at the very top right, and you tell us what's the relationship between the Biltmore and, and, and this first uh, wing of uh, the Princess Hotel. Well, both, both of the Biltmore and the Princess Kaiulani Hotels opened in 1955. They were both about the same height, about 10 stories, and they both changed Waikiki quite dramatically to both appear at the same time. At the time, they looked huge and dramatic, of course, today they would be dwarfed by everything else. The Biltmore Hotel was demolished in 1974 by being blown up by uh, dynamite. That was the first building implosion in Honolulu at a big scale. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we'll see what's going to happen with the Princess Kaiulani if it's going to be a similar fate. Yeah, yeah. But let's first revisit what happened to it five years after right. 1955, and that's the next slide. You can see that, in fact, that we're adding another wing that the one faces the Princess Street here, and that's only one story shorter than the original one, that's 10-story. Right. right. And then we'll move on to the next slide in 1970. So one and a half decades later, they were building what's most iconic now, the 29-story tower. Right. And we put in at the very bottom how many rooms right. the, this all together had and still has, and that's 1,142. So if you compare it to 1,009 of the new, simple people like us start to wonder, okay, why do you go through what you pointed out? Because you witnessed several demolitions. For yes. example, we will get to in, in one of the next shows, the Kaiser Hospital, which was yes. in Waikiki, that they basically blew up. And if you want to blow something up, in a sort of functioning and, you yes. know, in service uh, yes. um, a tourist industry. How do you want to do that? And why do you want to do that? If you don't provide, I mean, usually you redevelop because you want to make more money, right? So right. you want to be higher, you want to build higher. I think uh, the, the, the currently in the, in the poly, pol political realm, they're discussing to basically be allowed to go higher with tall buildings, right? So yeah. you, would, you would think, that's your motivation. So we're curious about exactly why do you want to redevelop. Correct. And, and from here, it's, it's hard. I think we probably, if this would be a Dokomomo uh, a show, which you're doing one next week, we would have to stop. But since we're human, humane architecture, we don't. We keep on going. We keep going. So let's go to the next page in 24. Here we're stepping above and beyond because we're thinking, you as a historian, you know, because you're going to be around in the next 50 years. Well, sure. we'll see. We'll I, see. I, I, I count you on that. All right, all right. And so you you, you want to have something that you want to preserve in 50 years. Correct. So we got to basically continue, which you pointed out in your last show in um, uh, Human Humane Architecture, which was about the tradition right. of the evolution of innovation on the island. Right. So you, wanna, you have to continue to create innovation, right? Right. So on, on, on this page here, we did this polemic collage of one of the very sexy pictures of the princess and the hotel and little references to a previous show where we were shedding a light on one of the new timeshare towers of the Hilton Hawaiian Village, which is a rather hideous building that yes. our tropical, tropic here, David Rockwood, basically at the end, he said, what are they going to put on top of it? They put some hideous crowns. Maybe they want to be a queen. Yeah. And then we found out why... why thinking about it, maybe she, it's not the queen because there are homeless people on the beach and the, the queens and the princesses always took care of their people That's so right. they wouldn't have done that. That's right. So we're just looking at, you know, the similarity and we want to do a show about a dress code and addressing yes, code. You told me that the queen, you know, was, was raised and it spent a lot of time in England. So yeah. she was very com cosmopolitan. Yes. So she was, you know, she represented the best of both worlds. Yes. World, right? Yes. The Western world and, and, the, and the Hawaiian, Hawaiian world. Right. world. And so I think the building does. You know, the building is, is, is a truly American high rise, but it's considerate of, you know, orientation, the yes. airflow, it's shading itself. It's pretty much, um, it, it's very tropical, exotic, yet it's very modern, right? Yeah, right.
And I think, too, so, we also were pointing out that the, the similarity, each of those wings has got the same lanai pattern, which I admire mm -hmm. that they, over this period of 15 years, they chose to keep that as a unifying factor of the three disparate buildings. And that's something that you rarely see happen. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And especially, again, tropical tourist expert Suzanne tells us there's like, you know, every... 15 years or something, mm -hmm. you got you got to totally redo things so that they, they were right. sticking to their sort of genetic code. Yeah. I think that's very, very remarkable. It Absolutely. Is. That's yeah. admirable. They were saying this is our signature style. We want to stick to that. And yeah. they, they, they wanted to resist that sort of temptation of novelty that yes. we have sort of these days. You yes. always got to be the best. You always got to be in a center you know, you always got to be American superstar, you know, up to the highest level of government. We have that, you know, that yeah. people maybe not that qualified want to be the best and the star. Well, anyways, let's move on to the next slide here, which is uh, tropical tourism. Suzanne, again, when she was in Brazil, the other tropics, she was hugging that palm tree on that little picture here. And I, I put that into the picture that you provided here, which I, which I find, I mean, talking erotic, Mm -hmm. uh, tropical exoticness yeah. this is it pretty much I mean this is why you go to the tropics you yeah. want to be in love you want to yeah. you know that's what you want to have in the jungle and even though it's an urban setting the composition that's the success of the development provided that yeah. you know what people wanted that's right. coming from the cold that's where I'm right. sitting here shivering yes <laughs> where I'm in the warmth so let's let's you know, sort of wrap up here and, and conclude with our polemic propositions, move on to the next slide. Here's tropical tourism expert Suzanne and, and activist journalist Kurt endorsing a, a project that we've been doing with the emerging generation, which is called Jungleism. And we're thinking about, again, to, to continue to write this story of the tradition of innovation on the island and sometimes you got to go full circle because, and, and Suzanne, Suzanne taught me the term USP, unique selling proposition. And one of them is our mild tropical climate versus some other subtropical climates where right. you can't be outdoors right. because it's always 100% saturated humidity. Yes. But here we got the trade wind. That's so right. maybe we want right. to rediscover the trade wind as a USP and work with that. So this one on a macro scale was proposing to strip the buildings naked take off their curtain walls, let the breeze go through, and then use nature to basically reinvigorate that kind of fabric. That, that right. was the, 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 the goal of, of that kind of project. And then, uh, you know, when you build something new, and let's move on to the next slide, and uh, you're by now way better to describe these projects that we've been doing than I am, which I'm very happy about. But we want to make sure to say it's not about these projects in specific. They're just placeholders. Right. This is Primitivo right. 1. And we want to say is basically, um, at the beginning of the 21st century, if you pick up that huge amount of money to, to, to destroy that, that gem from mid-century, uh, which you shouldn't, let's be clear about that, we, we, we would be more than happy to stay with our role and capacity of Docomomo members and showmasters. Please keep it, please keep it. But if for some reason you can't, then please build something today which is at least as good as the stuff that was built mid-century. And that was damn good stuff, right? right. Yeah. So that pushes the bar really, really high. Right. So um, what could that be, I think? And this is what tropical tourism Suzanne teaches me, that she basically says tourism is changing to, and I've, I hate the term sustainable, but that's just a technical term in that realm. They call it sustainable tourism. Is that the tourist is not someone that comes and trashes and right. depletes resources. Right. It's someone who becomes a short-term resident right. and basically engages both socially and culturally and economically and ecologically. Yes. So I think this is what a new hotel wants to be, to take this all into consideration. And Primitiva could be what comes out of it, but it could be also something different, but along these lines, right? Yeah, right, exactly. And, and I think that, uh, you know, Pr Primitiva is one, two, et cetera. The, the projects that you've done in your, in your teaching, again, are sometimes somewhat fantasy, but the point also is that uh, innovation is part of this. And if we're going to demolish yeah. old stuff, Let's look at what we can do better. Let's look at what we can do differently. Let's look at how we can evolve and grow rather than just repeat. 
Exactly. And I go to the next slide. This is Primitiva too. what we're talking about. And yes, they are visionary. And, and But so were the hotels and the Princess Hotel yes. what we're talking about today was very visionary in yes. the mid century. I mean, this was like a building on an island with no construction industry. Um, you know, building something like that was absolutely visionary. Yes, you know, it, that wasn't like copycatting something no. that has been done no, it wasn't. for centuries. But but that's what they're proposing right now. I mean, this really this what we see on this rendering, and we let ourselves be surprised with more details. But as of now, we just have to say it ticks us off because yeah. it doesn't look like I want to create something that is unique at the beginning of the 21st century right. for our most unique island. Right? Correct. That's right. That's so, right. So. Uh, I kind of lost track of time, which I always do, but this time in particular because we had some okay, technical got issues. VMix gave, VMix gave up on us, and Zoom right. gave up on us, and I guess Skype, so we're sort of like yeah. we're in limbo. But how, got, how much do we have left? We've got one minute left, so let's let's keep okay, going. Okay, well, that's, let's, let's, let's go yeah, to our let's next, go slide. next slide. So, so these are these are from your archive. Isn't this beautiful? And they even say here, you know, soft tropical yeah, breezes. Right. Waft through, through the lobby. lobby. Okay. So, so this is it. And if the hotel has that, just keep it. And That's the right. next one I love, this is from your poster collection. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. How they captured with this, with this drawing, yeah. the aspect of an oval pool, yeah. the hut, the yeah. palm trees, the blue sky, yeah. and then the kind of soft as etched tropicized rational international style. That's and right. The That's right. That's right. We just, yeah. we just, we just say keep that, keep it, keep yeah. it, keep it. But you know, if not, which is to be expected. Next slide. I think we got to continue to rebel, um, sort of, and be the public's conscious, and also do a shows about a couple of other projects that might be threatened as well. And yes. this might be one. Let's do a show about that one. This is part of the outrigger That's right. Development from the past. This yeah. is just a cross. Let's do a show about that one. But more urgently, let's go to the last slide. Here is a project that the announcement of the redevelopment of the Prince's property was pointing out, and I think they were a little screwed up with their mask because they said it's going to be the first new uh, only hotel tower in, in 40 years, but then they referenced the Waikiki <laughs> Park Hotel, which is part of the Halikolani that was in 87, so they're not quite That's sure. That's not 40 years. No. But, but this project, the Waikiki Park Hotel, is actually under, under development, and when I left, I took this picture here, so why don't we do the next show about that one, this yeah. photo? Because it seems really urgent to to raise awareness about you know what people have, and we we feel they don't even appreciate what they no, have. No, they right? frequently do not. No, that's very true. Well, I think that brings us to the end of this week's show for Human Humane Architecture. Uh, thank you, Martin, for joining us. Thank you, all of you, for joining us. I will be back next week with a Dokomomo show about something from the mid-century. But till then, thanks for watching and aloha.